jump. I'm gonna make the place a jump. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the place a jump. I'm gonna make the place a jump. Straight off the block. I'm about to make it hot. I'm about to turn it up. I'm about to break the clock. No time to stop. I'm a jump on the rock. I'm a free fall tonight. Amped up, so I'm feeling the vibe. Sweat dripping right off the mic. Celebrating that we all still alive. Drinks up, put your glasses out. Everybody here going by tonight. I wanna see the party hot. Never go home till the sun's alive. Stomp as a force collide. Dance to the pain style. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the place jump. I'm gonna make the place jump. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the place jump. I'm gonna make the place jump. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the place jump. I 
51 about LeBron, come sips to that shit and how you feeling dumb. 151 about LeBron, come sips to that shit and how you feeling dumb. 151 about LeBron, come sips to that shit and how you feeling dumb.
Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we get started with the night, I just want to say a few things, and I know, I know there's a couple more people that are going to say some stuff. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. Um, I know how much Jordan meant to a lot of people. Um, some deep conversations I had with him. I know he had some really big connections with a lot of people in this room. Uh, so I just want to. You know, I kind of wrote something. Um, obviously, Jordan was a brother, um, a mentor, a friend, and he had a lot of clo close connections with a lot of people. But one of the everlasting legacies that he'll be remembered for was his DJ career and how he helped change the landscape of the Las Vegas industry. As someone who spent almost every day with him for four years, I'd like to provide some insight on what he did and how he helped usher in a new era in Vegas. My earliest memories of Jordan was... Uh, taking trips to EDC, him and Kevin, sweating up a storm right in front of Christopher Lawrence. You know, like be drenched. You know, um, you know and I was his favorite artist, Christopher Lawrence. Um, even before he started DJing, you know, he really had a, uh, an ear for music. Oh, and, and Christopher Lawrence did show up. <laughs> um, he built his name in the rave scene um, along with his best friend, Kevin Sean. Uh, they were known as Sean and Stevens. Their house parties were legendary, and his sets were his gardening and following. Around 2006, Jordan made the jump to the club scene and joined Empire Ballroom with me. It was there where he helped create a new, light, a new night called Local Love. The premise was giving local DJs a chance to play. Before this night, Vegas was a real cut, cutthroat game. Um, where only a handful of DJs were able to play. You know, the Scotty Boys, Far Sheeds. That was, that was the game right there. Um, but through, through this night, many local DJs you, you hear about today got their start at that, that night. Jordan became the face of the night. Where most DJs try to keep other DJs down to preserve their spot, Jordan was the opposite. He was always lending advice and taking people under his wing. After Empire closed, he was my right-hand man at Vegas Alliance. At first, I would pitch him in every deal. Uh, but after they met him and heard him for the first time, I wouldn't even need to sell him anymore. With his infectious smile and nonstop energy, he won everyone over. Uh, Jordan was a, po a politician without being a politician. He was, he was that likable. <laughs> Quickly became the, the people's DJ. Every time he played, there was a spike in the numbers. His followings crossed over from the rave scene to the club scene, landing residencies with God's Kitchen, Perfecto, Palms, Mar and Marquis playing Love Festival, Fabulous Festival. After he left Marquee, he wanted to do his own shows and provide a bigger platform for other artists. Mike Ramity, Split Breed, Nick Foley, DeMarco Cruz, Stevie Mack. Jordan would always talk to me about how much he, he had love for those guys. Um, he went on to Bot English where he was producing his own events. Despite all Jordan's success, Jordan was still that kid from Macon, Georgia. He missed his family. He wanted to move closer to his parents and decided to walk away from the industry. Over the years, every time I would start a project, I would call Jordan and ask if he wants to come back. And every time, he would thank me, but turn it down. He was happy where he was. But he would always call me almost every week just to check on me. One thing is we all know about Jordan, he valued his friendships. Our last conversation was one I will never forget. We were talking about how life is short. We were discussing some of the people that we have lost uh, the last couple years. 
Through Jordan, I have learned even more so how precious and delicate life can be. We are lucky to have Jordan in our lives, and if you look around the room, you can see the many lives he touched. I will never forget him, and I will not be the promoter I am today without Jordan next to me. I love you, Jordan, and uh, you know this one's for you. Deanna? And, and as while she's doing that, <laughs> um, just to let you guys know what we have in store for tonight, uh, Kenneth Thomas came all the way from Detroit to be here for this. He's going to play. Christopher Lawrence had a gig last night, came out. He's going to play. And, uh, of course, Kevin Sean, DeMarco Cruz, Nick Foley, a lot of guys we consider Jordan guys that, you know, we used to have deep conversations about are, you know, are all going to play. Uh, if there's any of the guys that we did miss out, I apologize, but... Uh, we did try to get everybody that um, that I knew Jordan would uh, really like to have. So, sorry guys. Um, as many of you know, my name's Deanna. I'm a writer, but this has been by far the hardest thing I've ever had to write in my life. Um, many of you may have seen the obituary online, and I helped his parents write the business part of it, of course, because when I was talking to them and they were at the funeral home getting everything planned, they were like, well, you know, okay, what do we say? Jordan was a house music DJ in Vegas, and I was like, no, I'm going to stop you right there. <laughs> Not house. <laughs> okay. We start with trance, and then we go into maybe some progressive, and then maybe some breaks. So I was like, can I just write that part? So um, you can see it on the back of the memorial cards we have over here. But um, I will say, I don't know if the funeral home typed it out again or copied and pasted, but I did not spell Paul Van Dyke's name wrong. You all know I wouldn't do that. And uh, I also did not spell Carl Cox's name wrong, so that wasn't me. But anyway, just for the record. But um, I think what really broke me was when I saw that his parents put the obituary in the family section of who he is survived by. And I didn't know they were going to do this, and they put me in there as the love of his life. So I, I think our friend Lindsay said it best, was he was my person. And... Even though we were separated by miles, we were still writing our story. And we still had so many plans. And, you know, I hate to be cheesy with a quote. And I wrote down plenty of things I wanted to tell you guys. But, you know, not that Jordan and I were expressly major Beatles fans or anything. But you all know the quote, like, John Lennon, you know, life is what happens when you're busy making plans. So, if you have someone close to you and you haven't talked to them in a while, which wasn't us, we talked constantly every day. He had to check in on the cats because I was watching Baby Yoda the cat for him. Thank you, <laughs> sweetheart. <laughs> um, so, I have Yoda. He's with me. He's okay. He gets along with my DJ Shadow the cat. So, they're best cat, they're, they're black cat best friends. <laughs> um, I guess, I don't know, I, I wrote so much down, I just don't know what to say, and I am so completely lost without him, and I just want you to know we loved all you guys so much and appreciated you, and we were very, very private people. I think it was because we worked in the industry together, and we didn't want the owners of Tal Group to know we were together, and like, here, sir, here's your drink tickets for the evening. Thank you, ma'am. Like... I was able to find um, 
a podcast that we did together where I interviewed him in the Las Vegas Weekly Studio. So I'm really happy that I have a pristine, clean copy of his voice. And if you listen to it, which some friends have already, you can totally tell we were trying to play it cool. But, you know, I think I might have convinced my bosses for like a few months and then they figured it out. But anyway, um, so yeah, if, if you guys could go online, um, I posted the link in the event group. It's on my page too. If you could post your memories of Jordan on the Heritage um, on the Heritage Funeral Home page, that way his parents can see him. Um, that would mean a lot. Keep it G. <laughs> like rate it. Oh, this one time we got so drunk and he puked everywhere and you know, don't do that, please. I mean, they're probably watching right now, but you know. So if you guys could go on there and leave some memories. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we were just two kids from the South and somehow we ended up out here, so. Um, I want to say a couple things. Jeff and Kevin and Christopher, I have something for you guys. If you could come up here for a second. So I had these made for you guys because you were all so important to him. And um, at the funeral home, they took his fingerprints. And we all know his hands were his musical instrument. So I wanted, I had these lapel pins made for you guys. And um, they're his actual fingerprints. So I wanted you guys to have these. And I'm gonna take over before I lose it. <laughs> well, I'll take you so much. Yeah, I know, right? I just thought it was cool that there were his actual fingerprints, yeah, so yeah, totally. you might have to hold me because the guy's hands are so shaky and I'm so sweaty. I'm smiling down on us. Yeah. There we go. And somehow I get a microphone in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. So sorry we're here like this. Um, yeah, the guy, Kevin Sean, that would be me. Kevin Henderson is my real name. Kevin Sean, AKA Kid Protege. This guy talks me out of my very first DJ name, which is Kid Protege. And also gave me the first uh, chance to ever mix vinyl in a public setting and um, yeah, be as nervous as one could be. Jeff and Jordan, uh, did a lot of cool stuff together. I'm so proud of them. I would have never thought that as uh, coming up in these little house parties we were having, just DJing for fun. You know, we're buying records at Liquid 303, and you never really think that, man, this could really be a career, unless you're really serious about it. And I, I couldn't commit to it like the way he did. Um, I don't know why. I was scared. And Jordan just really grabbed that entire thing by the horns. And when we're driving to EDC to go watch Christopher Lawrence DJ, we're listening to George Acosta CDs, we're listening to all these trance CDs, Oakenfold CDs, and all these live sets from 1999, 1998, you know, the people that really laid the foundation for dance music, what it is today, and this kid went and opened up for everybody, you know, and um, it's really not surprising, because if he wanted to do something, he was so adamant that he was going to do it, you really couldn't tell him he's not going to do it, he's just had that type of personality, and I don't know. 20-something years is not nearly enough to know the guy is a best friend, you know? And he seems like he had so many good friends. It's, it's surprising, more day-by-day -day stories, and people coming out, you know? And we were his best friends. Yeah. Yeah, we were, yeah. It's unfortunate, but, you know? It is what it is. We got to, one day at a time, just keep moving on. What would Jordan want us to do, you know? Um, <laughs> where's the party at, right? Yeah, 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 party all the time. So... I don't know. Thank you all so much for coming out. We're going to play some music here in a little bit, and we've got some videos planned, and I don't know. A lot of people maybe haven't met Jordan's brother, Jameson, and this is Jameson. I don't want to put him on the spot to give a speech, but... Hi. I, I know a lot of you. I don't know a lot of you. Um, it's a good thing, actually, because there's a lot of people that Jordan touched. Um... 
I didn't write anything because I didn't really expect to do something like this. I didn't even do it in Tennessee when I was there not too long ago. Um, hopefully I don't cry. We'll try not to. Um, I think everybody in this room knows that Joran loves everybody. He never met a stranger. He treated everybody like they were the most important person in the world. Um, he led with his heart on everything. He never said anything bad about anyone. He cared about everyone. I think this room is a testament to that. Um, I think if he had maybe had an idea of how much and how many people he touched in his life, um, he probably would have just been blown away. I mean, this is, what, 70 people? Uh, the, the biggest thing is when I was back in Tennessee, you know, the, you hate that things like this bring people together, but you know, as we all move on in our lives, I don't think many people in here were in our 20s anymore, and I think that's when most of you guys created those friendships. Uh, my brother, I moved to Vegas to be near Jordan. I lived in the South. He was the guy that I always knew was going somewhere, but I never knew how or when or where he would get the ideas of what he would want to do. And, you know, he told me to come to Vegas because he wanted to be a DJ. And I was like, okay, that's cool, that's great, yeah, that's, that's a dumb idea. So he wanted me out here on February 19, 2009, because on February 21st, he was going to be DJing at Rain Nightclub. And he said, this is what's going to kickstart my career. I was like, okay, that's, okay, what's Rain? I'm from Macon, Georgia. If you guys don't know, it's 100,000 people. It's, it's a redneck country, let's just be honest. I mean, you go down there, and they like watching NASCAR and drinking Bud Light. Um, so I moved out here on a whim. I'd been talking about it for years. I was 24 years old, and I came out here, and the first night I went out there, I was blown away. No idea what I was walking into, and it, it showed me the type of person Jordan was, the dreams, the aspirations he had. And in his 20s and early 30s, he achieved more than most people achieve in 70 to 80 years of their life. So, you know, I would like to, I would like to think that he lived a full lifetime. He really did. Um, Christopher Lawrence, I'm so excited to have you out here. I met you many years ago, and it's been probably 10 years since I saw you last. Um, I don't know if you told the story, um, my dad, uh, okay, maybe, maybe slightly, maybe, maybe hopefully I can. <sighs> um, <laughs> woo! So my brother was 16 years old. He tells my dad, there's this DJ in Atlanta playing. Dad, let me go. His name is Christopher Lawrence. I want to go see him. <laughs> so my dad, being the protective dad, you know, we're from a very strict southern kind of area, Bible Belt, all that. You know, he's like, you want to go to Atlanta, get ruined. He's like, no, I'm going to take care of myself. I promise you. I just want to go see this guy spin. And my dad lets him go. He goes out there and comes back. And he just blew his mind. You know, Jordan's been in the house, trance, everything you could think of. Before house was EDM. Um, that was his, yeah, that was his scene. You know, he loved it. He loved music. He lived music. He breathed music. And that's what brought me and him together. And 10 years later, he gets to call my dad up and say, Dad, guess who I'm opening for today? And he's like, who? He's like, Christopher Lawrence. And, you know, when you're 16 years old, you know, whoever your idol may be or whoever someone you want to get around and be that person next, you don't, you don't think you're actually maybe going to be able to make it there. And he, he really did idolize you. He really did. Um, and that says a lot to you. You're so humble. Like, Jesus. I mean, every time, he's been the nicest guy every time I've met him. He's just been, like, so just like, oh, how are you doing? You're so, it's just so nice to meet you. And, you know, and that, that, was, that was who Jordan was. He was never arrogant. He was never an asshole. Sorry, Mom and Dad. They're watching, by the way. So my parents are on here. Um, everybody wait my parents. They're in Tennessee. Um, they really wanted to be here, and they really wanted to see all of you and meet all of you. Um, they met a lot of you for Jordan's 27th birthday, I think, back in 2011. What is the moon? He, he came in for his birthday. Like, I mean, come on. So, I mean, what a nice guy. And, Jordan, I mean, he loved music. He loved the scene. And this is, this is where you all came from. I don't think there's many of you in here that did not come from his love of music and passion for raves, uh, going to Nocturnal Wonderland. And I think I met some of you the first time I did some things I should have never done at, uh, what was it? What was, what was the Halloween one in LA? Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. That was the first time I got to experience the West Coast. And it's because of Jordan. Um, Jordan was, I lived with him on and off for 10 years, probably saw eight years in a row, and I don't mean to ramble, um, but, you know, we connected, we're brothers. He was the only brother I ever had. I never thought I'd be an only child, and, uh, you know, especially in your 30s, you don't think that's going to happen. You think you'll get to grow up with them and see them forever, and I know a lot of you 
obviously were impacted by Jordan the same way. You thought that he would be around for another 20 or 30 or 40 years, and it sucks. He's not, you know? He was the best person. He was the nicest guy. He made you feel like a million bucks. He put everyone before himself, and, you know, we just got to keep going on with life. You know, Jordan would never want us to stop from him. He had big dreams. He always wanted to achieve those dreams. He always wanted to bring me in to stupid ideas. Um, but it, he was always forward thinking. He was never thinking in the past. He was always thinking, what's my next big move? What can I do next? Um, and I know he'd want the same for every single person here. You know, so, you know, appreciate the relationships you have. If you have a brother, sister, mom, dad, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, and give them love. Thank them while you can. I think when things like this happen, you always think, what could I have done better? What could I have said? You know, could I have reached out to him two days before, three days before, whoever it may be? And, you know, life goes on, sadly, and we have to kind of accept what's happened and just move on, um, you know? So we have to love each other and just enjoy each other's company and, you know, don't lose your relationships with your friends. That's the one thing Jordan was good at. I think every single person that I've talked to today has said that I just talked to Jordan four days before. I talked to him a week ago. I talked to him, like, last Sunday, you know? He was so good about reaching out to people and staying in touch with people. Um, he appreciated relationships, you know, and he would want all of us to stay in touch with each other as much. And I can say a testament to so many of you I haven't seen in probably eight years. I mean, I haven't seen Chris. I saw you at Monster Massive in 2006, and I haven't seen you in 15 years, but you're my Facebook friend, so <laughs> it's good to see you. Um, but really, I, I really do thank you all so much for coming out and showing support for Jordan and the impact he's had on your life. My parents, thank you. Um, they really wish they could have been here, but we have some other things going on in life that they just couldn't make it, and they really wanted to watch this and be a part of it. So thank you all so much for showing up, and enjoy the night. Remember Jordan for the person he was, and um, have a drink for him. Whatever it may be that you do to idolize someone or remember them by, do it, and um, hopefully I can catch up with a lot of you more later. So I love you all. You. Have a good night. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm not real good at talking, so I'm going to make this real quick. I'm here for the same reason that you are. Jordan was extremely special. Um, I, I'm not real good about socializing, and I, I avoid people as much as possible. And when I go into towns, I rarely go to dinners. Or do, I avoid promoters and other DJs and everything. But Jordan was the exception. I felt safe with Jordan. I felt comfortable with Jordan. It was like family. And it's really hard to explain, but I connected with him, like, rarely that I do with other people. And I also discovered that my success in Las Vegas was due almost entirely to Jordan. Because <laughs> as, he, as he became resident at each and every club, he would lobby to have me play. And I, and I started realizing, every time I play, it's with you, Jordan. <laughs> and he never told me why. He never said it was because I got you the gig. And that's, the, that's why we all love him. He was super humble. He cared about other people. He put everybody else before himself. And um, yeah, that, that's what made him special. That's why I liked him. And I guess that's why you guys are all here, too. So thank you. It's good to see you again. Okay, two more things, and then uh, we'll get into the DJs and have them do their night. Uh, so I need a bottle of Sky, a full bottle of Sky, please. This is compliments of Saul. <laughs> I need somebody to. <laughs> he did. He's got COVID right now. But per Saul, I'm about to drop a whole liter of fucking Sky on the floor. That was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, Jordan's parents, but. <laughs> He wants us to pour it out for him. So we're uh, bartender, Sean. I'll put it on comp later. I just need a uh, comp bottle of Sky. Okay, besides that, out front, there's a picture of Jordan and we have uh, some paint markers next to it. Um, we're actually gonna send that to his parents. So please sign that before you leave. Keep it classy. And uh, I need this on video for Saul.
Sunshine.